John, uh, let me know, for you, uh, how's camp been, and really how do you see Sergey compared to the Pascal camp and the Bernard camp? Uh, well, camp's been going very, very well. Um, this camp is a little more focused than the uh, Pascal camp. Kind of, uh, um, I'm going to say not focused, but maybe had a couple outside distractions. Um, this fight here, he's definitely focused, you know, he knows that he wants to put on a better performance. I thought the Pascal performance was good, pretty good myself. Uh, he doesn't feel that way, so that's fine. You know, that, that, that you want to build on that. Um, I know this kid's not as dangerous as, as maybe as crafty Bernard was, or a big of a puncher as Pascal was, but he still brings something to the table that we have to respect. I mean, he, that means he's being the fourth and half to take the title. And, you know, so Sergey's definitely focused on that. He, you know, he loves being champion. He loves it. So that's his motivation to keep training hard for these, these fights that are not as meaningful as other fights have been in the past or could be in the future. For you as a trainer, when you get these type of fights when it's not a big name, mm -hmm. uh, does it worry you a bit? Not so much that Sergey won't train, but what you mentioned, the motivation? Yeah. Not with Sergey. You know, like I said, this is his dream. And he's living it and he wants to keep living it. It's a great feeling for him. So for him, I don't we we'll see a problem with that. A lot of, a lot of guys have letdowns. Mm -hmm. They have a big fight, and then the next guy is not so dangerous, and not a big name. Maybe the money's not as good. So they kind of let, they let down. Not so good. He wants to win every fight impressively, and he wants to retain his belt, because he, he still wants that green belt. So until he becomes a disputed world champion, there's always that hunger there. And I, and, I, and I hope after he gets it, he'll still be as hungry as he is today. You guys are training here in Oxnard, which yes. is a little bit different. Yes. Has that made a difference at all? It's made a difference in the, the weather is it's not as humid as in Florida. For him, Wait, so would, it, would it kill him when he was doing cardio and man, training? In Florida, oh man, he, he, <laughs> he couldn't stand it. So, you know, yeah. we, we talked about that this morning. So, you know, here, summer, he wants to train here. Winter here comes to Florida because it's still warmer. Um, but right now, he says this is the best place for him. And listen, I, I, I love it. You know, he, he can still sweat and still get a great workout without all the humidity. So, which doesn't, which doesn't burn him out. So, training here is not a problem. Do you feel that? With what you just said, was he coming into fights overtrained at all? Never overtrained. We you know because we have peaks, and you don't have, you know once you reach that certain level, you want to stay there. I don't want you to start to taper off. So I made camp where we started slow and worked our way up, and then once we got to that level we wanted to be at, we would know we wouldn't peak. We stay right there until fight night, and it would allow him, you know, stay stay kind of edgy and stay focused. I didn't want to burn him out because you know if you do that come fight night, if it, this. If his, if his clip's not fully loaded, he's in trouble. So, he, you know, we, 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 we do it just right for him. And, and so this fight the same way. He's starting to really come into to, to shape and focus now for this fight. How do you see this fight going? It can go two ways. It, it, it really depends on what uh, Najib does. If he likes to try to stand in and slug with Sergey, it'd be a short night. If he tries to box and, and, and you know, make a survival type fight, it might go a while. I, I'm not impressed with the style. And here's the thing, you know, people say Abel is, is training now. But Abel can't teach him in a short period of time. We need to, need to know to, to be Sergey. Because as soon as he gets hit, he can revert back to all the old things he did in the past. And you know that's what happens with most most fighters. When they get hit, clipped by a good shot, they, all that uh, that stuff you're talking about, they throw it out the window, man. They're gonna go for survive, want to do what they do best. So I don't see a problem with uh, Najib. It, it's a fight that very winnable for, for Sergey, and he should win it. So you know, can it go one? White pocket, can it go 12? I doubt it goes 12, but you know, you, you get a few rounds out of it. Abel's very familiar, uh, familiar with Sergey for yeah. a time he, he trained with them. Is that all in your guys' mind, uh, having the sparring footage and just him being so familiar? No, no. Listen, Abel can't fight for him. When the bell rings, Abel's going down, going down the steps. Najib's on the ring. So, you know, you know, it's. I understand their positions because of the dislike for each other. Because you know, if I, if I train, if a guy trained me, and he's no longer my trainer, and he starts saying things, it's gonna get under my skin. But the way Sergey uses that is as a tool that's it's gonna take it out on the G. So he, you know, he's in trouble. Sergey, you know, Abel said a lot of a lot, a lot of things. Now he's trying to backpedal a little bit, but it's too late now. You know, the stir the pot's been stirred, and this kid, this kid, all the things Abel said, this kid has to back him up now. Can he do that? I doubt that. So, you know, it's, it'll be an interesting fight for as long as it lasts. Um, the question is, can Najib, can he nullify Sergey's power and, and, and you know, maybe I'll point him. He's not a big puncher. He, he's been stopped, you know, he's a... Uh, it it's an interesting fight for the fans, and, and can Sergey knock him out? Can Najib beat him, upset him? Uh, will it go the distance? I doubt it.
You know, I won't say it won't go one. It, it, it should go past one round. It might not, but it should go past one. Uh, but we came for 12. We came for hard 12 rounds. The goal 12. God bless Najee. Looking at Adonis Stevenson, mm -hmm. and I know he always comes up, but it seems that it really irks Sergey. And Sergey seems really calm, like he doesn't really get angry over things. But when it comes to him, like you see a lot of emotion come out. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Uh, well, you, you know, Adonis has a WBC belt. Sergey wants it. He has, it's nothing against Adonis personally. It's his business. He wants the belt. You know, people say Adonis has been running. I say, listen, it's, it's, it's a smart business. Make all you can while you can and then take the dangerous fight last. You just don't want the fight to go the way of Mayweather, Pacquiao, five years too late. But by then, no one would care about this fight, trust me. You know, you need a fight that has that kind of marquee value. So hopefully it happened in 2016 and the fans, you know, the fans deserve to see fights like that. Unification between two good fighters, two good knockout punches. Yeah, Stevenson needs his one-hand knockout punch, so he knocks out with both hands. So, hopefully that fight will happen in 2016. Other fights that could potentially be in the horizon, do you feel that uh, an Andre Ward fight might be in the horizon, or Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight might be in the horizon? Any, any of those two fights could be. It depends on the other side's promoters and what they're going to do. I tell both they'd be in trouble if they fought him. You know, Andre was great at, he was great at 68. Very good fighter. Can't knock him for that. Fighting this guy, totally different style, totally different guy. Bigger puncher, stronger guy, bigger guy. Andre doesn't have the punching power to keep him off of him. You can't keep this kid out for 12 rounds, you have no punching power, and your chin is suspect, you're in trouble. And boom, it hurt. Mm -hmm. What do you think of having a surrogate? You feel Andre's chin is suspect? Uh, suspect? Yeah, I'll just say, hey, you didn't drop, but, but, but Boone can punch, don't get me wrong, Boone can punch, but Boone can drop it. We didn't have one when surrogate hits you flush. And the surgery hits you everywhere. You can't hold, you can't grab for 12 rounds, you gotta fight this fight. Yeah, but listen, Andre may be able to just pull a rabbit out of his hat. Make the fight and we'll see. I'm not, I'm not dogging him, I'm just saying that. He doesn't have to fight that he needs.